All of us will once be on a search for the perfect skin tone, always admiring those whose work make our jaws drop and wonder how the f did they do it and wishing we knew how to do it. For you, today is your lucky day, as I have put together the four most used skin tones to end your search and frustration. Our first runner-up is your basic skin tone color from Tamiya. Some just use it out of the bottle, but it tends to be a bit too tanned, so some just soften the tone with white. It's okay, but still, for me this is a technique that I only use when I'm painting male kits, not so much as female ones. Well, you may have wondered why my paint was dry. Yeah, it's because it's been a long time since I actually opened it. So if you ever wondered what dry paint looked like, well, there you go. The second technique is just a pre-made skin tone from Mr. Hobby, but be careful when using them as they are lacquers. So check out my tools video for more notes on that. Anyways, Mr. Hobby character flesh number 111 and number 112. You will get a more pinkish look as you can see here on this mega spoiler for my next Sailor Cosmos video whip. The way you can use them is that you need to use white as your base coat. Then you will need to pre-shade the pieces with the 112 and then use the 111 to soften the shades. This is a technique that most Japanese hobbyists use. Kind of like the easy way out, don't you think? The third technique is a bit more elaborate and requires some trial and error to get it right. But after that, it's as easy as pie. So... Take notes! Thank you, Deadpool! Now, there are several recipes for different tones. I have not tried all of them, but you might want to experiment with them a little, maybe adding a bit more or a bit less of the color so that you can get the desired tone. For a warm pink, you will need 100 drops of white, 2 drops of yellow, and 1 red. For cold pink, 100 drops of white, 1 red, and 1 black. Yes, don't be afraid to use black, trust me. For a salmon skin tone, you will need 100 drops of white, 4 black, 8 yellow, and 2 red. For beige, use 100 drops of white, 2 yellow, 8 black. For tan skin, you can use 100 white, 12 black, 1 red, 2 yellows. Orange skin, you will need 100 white drops, 2 red, 16 yellow, and 16 black. I actually painted poison with a warm pink tone. You can see the result for yourself. I also used a tan skin recipe for Arsh's name. If you want something like this, you can play a little with the following recipes. 6 millimeters of white, 15 drops of red, 5 drops black, and 15 yellow. For a bit more pinkish look, try using 2 millimeters of white, 8 drops of red, 1 black, and 6 yellow. I did use the first one, but added more black and red to the recipe and got this tone. And to finish it off, I added a clear coat of red. The last recipe is actually for more advanced hobbyists, but you can give it a try, taking into consideration that practice does make perfect. This is called the clear skin tone method. This recipe was provided by Asusa Sino from Korea, and here is what you will need. 10 milliliters of clear gloss paint, 5 to 7 drops of clear orange, 1 to 2 drops of fluorescent pink. Then you will need to mix separately 10 milliliters of clear gloss and 7 to 10 drops of clear red. This is to shade the skin after you apply the clear orange mix. The results are breathtaking. This one and a half scale sword silver girl was painted with this technique, and it gives it a completely different view compared to the other techniques. To apply this method, it must be done in layers. Don't try and do it all at once. You need to build it up until the desired tone. Then just add the clear red to shade and you're all set. Also, a great tip for shading comes from the land of Down Under. 
thanks to David, a.k.a. Senyak. He has been more than generous to let me share this shading guide and pass the knowledge. Of course, this is too much to remember from a video, so these diagrams can be downloaded from my website. You can check the link on the bottom of this video where the information is located. Like I said, this does take a lot of practice to get it right, but it's worth it. I used it on one of my kits to try it for the first time. I was satisfied, but the only down part is that unless you use lacquer paints, you will end up with a shiny finish after adding a matte varnish. So there you have it, the most used techniques out there and all that's left for you is to decide which one you want to apply. Till next time, Risen Heads! You were recording that, weren't you, player? <laughs> no! <laughs> What do you mean you weren't recording that? <laughs>